Good morning, Trinity Bible Church, and welcome back to our digital content here. Last week, we began our series on Sunday of spiritual disciplines. And then last Thursday, I introduced this video companion series. Thursdays following each message, we're going to have just a short series prompting us to an application. And again, we'd love to hear how has the series been going for you? What have you been trying to apply and how can we help you with those applications? This last week, Peter preached on prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting are two terms that are quite commonly heard in the church and occasionally preached on, but how often do we set aside and meditate and think about how we can apply these disciplines into our lives? In his message, Peter introduced three types of prayer. He talked about prayers of supplication. That is prayers where we ask God for something. It can be for peace, for healing, for victory, for conversation, for opportunity. But it is us coming to God, asking God to do something on our behalf. We are asking God for his supplication. The second type of prayer that Peter introduces us to is the idea of prayers of praise and thanksgiving. That is when we come before God, we praise him and we thank him for what he has done, for what he is doing, but also for what he will do. But not only for the things that God has, is, and will do, but also for those things he hasn't done, or not only for the things he has given us, but maybe the things that he withheld. He gave us the passage where Jesus praying to the Father, thanks him for withholding knowledge from the wise so that it'll be obvious that the information is given by God and not by human revelation. The third form of prayer we were then introduced to was prayers of conversation. And that's just simply what it sounds like, having a conversation with God, praying to God, sharing our day. Now, when we reflect on these three types of prayer, supplication, praise and thanksgiving, and then conversation, Prayers of supplication come quite naturally to us, don't they? Even to people who don't believe in God in times of fear, distress, or anxiety, find themselves calling out to the great unknown, pleading that if there is a God, might he hear their prayers. Parents, we know that we don't have to teach our kids much to ask for things. It comes quite naturally. Rather, it's the flip side of responding properly When that supplication is provided for, that is where parents often struggle, teaching the child the please and the thank you side of things. Which takes us to those prayers of praise and thanksgiving. These we might be slightly familiar with as well. When God shows up in a big way, when God performs healing or some kind of miraculous provision beyond our means, we will turn to him at times and we will thank him for those big things, but... What about the little things? How often do we turn to God and praise and thank him for the breath in our lungs or the fact that we have electricity in our houses or the running water we have access to, the health in those around us? We can often praise and thank God for those big things, but we may often neglect the smaller things, the more mundane parts of life. Or again, as mentioned prior, When's the last time we thanked God for what he didn't do or for what he chose to hold back? But then we get to the weird one, right? The the prayers of conversation. Having a conversation, just talking to God about our day. When's the last time you prayed and just shared your day with God, your joy, your anxiety, your desires, your worries, not so that he can fix them, but just so you can have that shared time of communion, of praying to and being with God. We often may bring these things before him, but again, only out of supplication or after the fact, we may bring them to him in thanksgiving. But when did you last just talk to him in conversation? It's, if our faith is built on a relationship and relationships are built in conversation, Shouldn't this be a more common form of prayer than it is within our disciplines? We've done a few videos about prayer on our Facebook and YouTube previously. We have a great video about the ACTS prayer method that is admiration, confession, thanksgiving, 
and then supplication. We have a video explaining the examine prayer method. It's a 500 year old method of prayer that a monk came up with to help the people he was teaching learn to see God by actively looking for him throughout their day as they just reflect on how God may have been active in the day previously. And so I will have those linked in the description here as well. But in addition to prayer, Peter talked about fasting. A lot of us in the church are slightly aware of the idea of fasting. We may have tried some form of a short-term fast. Uh, I know in the youth group we did the 30-hour famine, a 30-hour fast to experience parts of the world that struggle with hunger. But when's the last time that you did a serious fast, a fast that stretched you, that hurt, that made you long for food, that made you long for more? Or what about fasts from other things? Fasts don't have to be from food. There can be other areas of our life that we may need to take a fast. Perhaps for you, you need to fast from the TV or from watching sports or from playing games or spending too much time on your phone. What things may be distracting you from God and how could you fast from those things to have your focus diverted back towards God? Again, not all fasts have to be food. The goal of the fast is to draw us to a deeper reliance on God. And as we have a time of fasting, and as we see God provide through that hunger or through that longing, or as we help him give us strength amongst difficulty, we know that in the future we can rely on him to provide against new difficulties, against new turmoil, against new temptations. So part of the joy of the fast is not just the immediate fast experience, but the mindset that we can have going forward and the assurance of God's provision. As we look at these ideas of prayer and fasting that takes us to the key question of the video, what can you do? Maybe one of these three areas of prayer stood out to you. Maybe you don't pray much at all and you just want to start praying. Can you pick a time and a day? Can you create a plan to practice supplication, to practice praise and thanksgiving, or just to practice conversation? Maybe as you drive to work the next few days, or you drive your kids to school, or while you're out running errands, you're just gonna take that windshield time and start a conversation with God. And it may be awkward, just it may feel like you're talking to yourself as you drive, but as you remind yourself that God is listening, how can you make those times of conversation more a part of your daily rhythm? Or maybe it's just writing down everything that you've seen God do in the last few months and taking an extended time of thanking God for all of those things. Or maybe it's writing down the 10 names of people closest to you and then writing one or two needs that they have and praying that God will help you meet those needs in their lives. Or maybe you're a prayer warrior and fasting is more something you need to work on. What is it that you can give up so that you can better experience God? This may sound ironic, me coming to you through a screen right now, but for me it's screen time. I can spend way too much time looking at screens for mere entertainment to, to numb me from the responsibilities or duties around me, but how can I sacrifice that time of entertainment or that time of enjoyment and redeem it as time to seek God. And maybe it's turning that screen time into prayer time or into reading scripture time, but how can I lessen that screen time to greaten my experience of God? But what about you? What is your application for this coming few days? What prayer do you want to embrace? Or what fast might you need to forfeit? Let us know in the comments. What is it that you are going to be doing this week to practice prayer and fasting? And until next time, as always, God bless.